When did you get started on guitar? Uh, I started when I was uh, eight years old. Um, I went to a friend's house. I was seven, actually, and about to turn eight. And I went to a friend's house, and there was a guitar there. Uh, I remember I picked it up, and I just played it open strings, and, and it sounded so nice that, um, you know how kids are, I, I got really excited, and I wanted a guitar for my birthday. Um, and I remember asking actually for a, a toy guitar, like plastic made or, or something. And my parents were uh, smart enough to do some research and get me a real one, uh, I guess three quarter size. Um, I, I still have it. And, uh, and they bought me that one. Uh, and it came, I remember, with eight free lessons that I didn't want to go at the beginning, but I ended up going. And uh, I got along with the teacher, uh, who was then my, my first teacher, uh, Robert Ravera. Very good, good teacher. Because uh, I not only went to those eight lessons, I went to, with him for like 10 years, I started with him. So uh, he always kept me in. Uh, focused and interested and, and doing new things. Uh, and I guess through him I learned the importance of, of uh, getting a good teacher. What sort of things did you start with? Like what were some of your first concert pieces? Um, well, I always, uh, without knowing it, I uh, right from the beginning I, I learned classical classical technique. Of course I was eight and I didn't know the difference between the styles. Uh, my first teacher taught classical, so uh, right from, from the beginning I was learning little pieces by uh, Caruli, Carcassi, all the, the old uh, methods. Um, so at, all, at the same time popular music from Uruguay and Argentina went for for easy classical guitar, and I think with that I performed my first uh, exams and, and concerts uh, in Montevideo. How's the guitar world different in Uruguay versus the U.S.? Uh, the guitar world. Um, I think it's uh, it's it's always hard to compare to the U.S. because it's such a big country and, and so diverse. Um, Uruguay is very little, uh, only three million people, and um, uh, the guitar is kind of our national instrument. So, um, if you organize a guitar concert and you uh, publicize it, uh, you know you're going to get people and, and uh, interest from the community. Uh, and actually, for our small size, we always had a big. Uh, history with the guitar. We have many big names. Segovia lived there, Barrios lived there, uh, and then we have many great international renowned guitarists. Uh, Abel Cardevaro, Albert Pierri, Eduardo Fernandez, just to name a few. Um, so there's a strong tradition there for the guitar. What sort of repertoire are you drawn to nowadays? Um, to study, I like uh, a little bit of everything. I like to uh, always switch. And um, right now, I'm, I'm working on, on some uh, uh, Spanish music for a couple of uh, concerts I have coming up. But uh, I always try to do mixed styles in performance and, and also when I'm practicing. Um, I also like to read music, uh, side read. A lot of music, so I would spend like two or three days only with a piece, and then move on, write some fingerings, and kind of have it ready for if I if one day I decide to that I have to really learn it and practice it. Uh, I'll have all the fingering down and, and everything, and it's a good way to to get to know the repertoire. Very cool. So. Let's talk about your new CD that you just released. It's titled Red, right? That's correct. And what inspired the title? Um, the title, um, it was um, kind of a, an accident that we stumbled uh, across that word red. And I really liked it. 
I really like the, the simple idea that uh, being a, a primal co color, simple but it awakens strong reactions uh, right away. That's sort of how I feel with uh, the music and, and, and that repertoire that I, that I recorded in particular. Um, I have it here. Uh, it's, um, it's recorded under the Fleur de Son label. Um, and it's uh, was part of the first prize of the Grand Paleta competition that I won in 2008. So I went to Buffalo and recorded there in a great space, uh, Langhans Hall, where the Buffalo Symphony Philharmonic plays. Um, and it was a, a great experience, and I decided to record uh, seven composers. So it, it has a little bit of everything. So what what repertoire did you decide to put on it then? Um, I had to play the uh, the one that had been the set piece for the competition, uh, Asiana Five by Nicola Starchevi, and then I, um, which is a piece that I really like. And then I added two other uh, modern composers, Tom Eastwood and um, actually Fleury, Abel Fleury from Argentina. Uh, not so much modern, he wrote in a uh, more popular style. And then I, um, I did some poems with that one, Scarlatti and Sor, those are more known uh, pieces. What's your typical practice day look like? Um, there's no such thing as a typical practice day. Uh, it depends on, uh, of course, what I have to do and what things I have coming up, especially. So when I'm preparing concerts, I, I like to, whatever time I, I know I'm going to have during the day, I try to split it up uh, in little sessions and do maybe one of them, the first one in the morning, do some technique and then uh, work on the pieces slowly and then the last run will be like performing or the whole concert or the, the whole program. That's usually uh, what I do during the day of practicing when I'm preparing a uh, concert. Um, do you usually tour with the same music for a whole season or is it on an individual concert basis? Um, I keep some pieces that I could call the uh, seasonal pieces. Uh, others I like to change uh, from concert to concert, uh, depending on how much time I have, uh, the audience, uh, many factors. And also to keep it interesting for, for myself. Yeah. How long does it take you to learn a piece, like start to end, for like first read through to concert ready? Um, of course, it depends on the piece. Um, I can learn it fairly quick, uh, but I think um, there is some period of time that you need to mature a piece. Um, so I can have it maybe in a week ready, but I wouldn't like to play it before a month or so um, to do justice to the music. Had you been playing all the pieces on your album for quite some time before you recorded them? Um, yes and no. Um, some some pieces I, I played for a long time, then I stopped playing them, and then I recycled them. Uh, some others, I um, like the ones I, Fleury, for example, that I play a set of three, or Scarlatti, I also play a set of three sonatas. Uh, one or two of them I had, and then I thought they combined very well with this other one, so I learned that one and, and added it to, to the set. Very cool. Um, do you have any tips for guitarists practicing, performing, anything like that? Um, well, I, I actually do have. Um, I've been teaching for a number of years, uh, and uh, kids and, and advanced students. Um, I would say uh, I always recommend 
not to listen to guitar CDs too much or guitar repertoire. Uh, I I see the guitar as uh, as uh, our goal is maybe to imitate the voice, the human voice, or or the different instruments in an orchestra. Uh, so it's good to listen to, uh, to songs, to opera, to symphonies, and get that sound uh, in your mind, and then try to recreate that in the guitar. Uh, we guitarists, we usually tend to listen too much to other guitarists and copy, and then get in cliches or, or habits uh, from guitarists, and we are all always kind of close-minded about the guitar sound, how a guitar should sound. Uh, so that musically, which of course every every tip should be towards uh, the music. Uh, musically, that, that would be my uh, actually my, my first uh, tip to listen to other types of music. What do you have coming up in the 2010-11 concert season? Um, I am booking a few concerts. I'll be playing in uh, in California, in Pennsylvania. Ohio, or of course in South, South Carolina where I live, and, and some other places that I don't, I'd rather name when I confirm the dates. Uh, but yeah, with the, with the CD out and sending it out, um, I'm trying to get more concerts and perform a little bit more.